So my printer hasn't hasn't worked, but I've got it my information here. Welcome to you all. Um, it's lovely to have you this morning. I see some people are still trying to connect. So I'll just there one or two that still says connecting. So I'll just give it another moment and we can allow ourselves just to settle in this time. And as we settle, the printer starts. <laughs> So that's good news. Nikki, the good news is Mercury is coming out of retrograde on Friday. So hopefully things will start working again and start moving forward on Friday. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Eden knows much more about this than, than I do, but I do know that sometimes things are very glitchy. And I must say, if um, anyone is awake at sort of in the mornings around five, half past five, it's really worth going outside because mm -hmm. just seeing uh, Mars and Jupiter so close together, you, Mars is the red, you can see the red and then the Jupiter is so bright behind it and seeing Venus so bright, they're just so clear. And then because it's new moon, well, what's yesterday at lunchtime, we'll be tracking it as it, um, as it starts to, to be visible again, because they were right, right up close to the moon and then the moon slowly faded and we see those um, beautiful planets. So it is worth going into and seeing. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. Um, and um, as I said, yeah, yesterday was the new moon and a start of a new moon cycle and a good time to formulate our intentions. So I'm seeing some more faces. Welcome Gail and Nat and by Vida, I don't know how to say your name, but welcome, it's so nice to see you and shown. Welcome everyone. So it's a time of lower energy often for us, a time to just connect a little bit more with ourselves. Last night I did take myself off and had a lovely bath um, instead of carrying on with a little bit of admin and work. Um, and I listened to Pam Gregory's reading on the new moon in Gemini, which talks about there being lots of warrior energy around at the moment. Um, and we kind of seeing it reflected in society. Things are, are brewing, there's lots of, sort of warrior stuff. There was many of us who were very distressed at what happened with Michael Austin John's Derby this past weekend. And she just talks about that there's all sorts of physical and political sort of earthquakes, lots of fiery words and behavior around at the moment. And that it's all about truth and higher mind and sort of looking for, for truth. Um, and she did another beautiful video that I really recommend you listening to. It's just a sort of seven minute one. It's not an astrology one, but it's called um, Look What Love Built. Because she said she woke the other morning just with this mantra turning around in her head. And our warrior energy can be used for love. And love is a verb. It's a very powerful, active force. Our, our friend, many of us on this are friends with um, Kirsten Legg, who's got a lovely sort of NGO charity. She does a huge amount of charity work and her, her phrase is love is a verb. Um, some of the things she does is you might, if you're in Johannesburg and even Cape Town, see um, some of the street, there would be beggars, but they stand with their boards with heart stickers. And you can buy one of those boards with the stickers and then gift it to them. And that's a way that they can sell those stickers to earn a bit of money rather than just giving money to them. And it's a lovely, lovely thing that she's created. And so that is love is a verb. And so I really encourage you to watch this look what love built and perhaps we can dive into it a little bit more um, next week. And she talks about expanding into love and noticing where our energy is feeling expansive um, and at the same time, many of us who are on this call are also um, leaders and wellness advocates at Deterra, and many of us are following a wonderful um, woman called Henrietta, and we will bring this to the rest of our team, but she's doing a Melissa challenge, so some of us has this, have this beautiful Melissa touch, and every hour on the hour, so I'm a few minutes late, but we're smelling our Melissa for today. And hers is also about a theme. It started yesterday at 11.11. 11, and we, uh, it's the Melissa's the oil of light um, and it awakens our soul to truth and light. And again, every time, every hour, we 
as we um, smelling our Melissa, we are pausing and feeling into our expansion of our energy. And actually I've noticed in those pauses how I'm like, oh my gosh, no time to pause, no time to expand. And I feel, notice how contracted I'm actually feeling. And so this is a bringing a consciousness to expanding our, our energy. And this whole practice that we're gonna to do today is around feeling more expansive and connected. And um, yeah, Mother Teresa said, peace begins with a smile. And, you know, it's these small things and often there is so much wrong with the world. There's so much tough stuff going on, but to remember that um, that peace begins with a smile. And unfortunately, we're not really seeing many smiles at the moment because everyone's masked up. And it seems to, when we're out and about, create sometimes a little bit of a... Um, aggressive energy when we're not seeing each other's smiles and people not not engaging um, and so some of you who've been around for for a while know how um, little I like mass and um, how much many of us have spoken out against wearing them and I'm wearing my mask far far less in fact I only now wear it under my chin if if that and I'm smiling a lot more and I'm noticing that Tellers, shopkeepers, people are responding. No one's asking me to put it on other than the security guard at the entrance. And then I then I just do it for two seconds because we're missing each other's smiles and we're missing that connection. So um, for those who don't know, I'm a physiotherapist and I specialize in breath and breathing. And if anyone does ask me about it, I say to them that I, I, I know a huge amount of breath and breathing. And wearing a mask to stop a virus is a little bit like wearing underpants to stop a fart. We can, we can hope it's gonna help, but it's, it's not, not really. And in fact, it just increases our anxiety because it increases our mouth breathing. Um, but the good news is that if, if masks really do work and they're wearing their masks, then, then they'll be protected anyway. But um, I, I haven't been challenged. That's what I prepared to say. So. We're missing each other's smiles and the practice that we're going to do today is um, one that I was introduced to by Tara Brach. We've done something similar, um, but this is her practice called the, the Smile Down. Um, and it's a lovely gentle practice for coming back into our bodies. Um, and even or especially if we've had trauma and dissociation and we feel disconnected from our, our bodies. So I invite you, I'll just with the sound of this, the um, bells, just to allow your eyes to close or to soften. Sitting up nice and tall and being as awake as you can be. Oh, and I am recording. And just, we're gonna begin with a few full breaths exaggerating the in-breath so that you really fill your chest and lungs. And then a slow, long out-breath so that there's a sense of release. Inhaling fully, deeply filling the lungs. And a slow out-breath with a sense of letting go. And again, inhaling deeply, fully, and then letting go. And just doing this a few more times in your own time. Really feeling into the sensations of letting go. And then allowing your breath to resume a natural rhythm, letting your senses be awake, listening in for sounds around you,
and then imagining a great sky extending in all directions. A vast blue open sky. And a sense that that sky is filled with the curve of a smile. With the receptivity and the openness of a smile. And just allowing yourself to explore that image for a few moments. This great open sky filled with a smile. And then imagining and sensing that that smile is descending and spreading through the mind. Letting your mind and the sky merge so that there's an openness. There's no ceiling between the two. An openness of mind that's receptive and awake. And then letting that smile spread through the eyes, smiling into the eyes, Sensing the corners of the eyes turn up a little. The brow smooth, eyes soft. Feeling the sensations and aliveness in the brow, brow area and around the eyes. Sky and mind and eyes, an openness, a smiling. And then sensing a smi slight smile at the mouth, inside of the mouth, smiling. The jaw relaxed and open, and your tongue perhaps softly, gently resting on the palate. Allowing yourself to receive the sensations of a smile in your mouth area. Feeling into the sensations and aliveness in your whole head. Eyes are smiling, mouth. You may visualize and send a smile down to your throat area. Feeling the breath a little as it moves in and out of the throat area. The curve of a smile as it softens. Feeling a relaxing. A letting go. Visualizing and sensing a smile spreading now through the heart area. Not to cover over, but to create space for what is there. It's 
sensing and opening spaciousness and allowing in the heart and chest area. Perhaps even more space between yourselves. Feeling the chest and the heart area from the inside out. Feeling the life that is there. Floating in that space of a smile. And extending that awareness up into the shoulders, feeling the shoulders from the inside out. Softening a little. Perhaps noticing as you soften that you can feel more intricately the movement and the sensations in the area. Perhaps noticing how much you were holding on. And just for this moment, softening and letting go. And feeling the life in your arms. Placing awareness inside the arms and down into the hands. Softening our hands and receiving the tingling, vibrating, pulsing, the life that's there. So if you widen your attention now, you can feel the whole chest, the arms, the hands, the face, the throat. And feeling the awareness that's inhabiting this whole area, feeling awake. And imagining that same smile spreading through the navel area, belly. As it does so, there's a loosening, a softening. A receptivity. Letting this Next breath be received with a softened belly, belly. This breath. And then this one. Our awareness deep inside our torso, our sides, our back radiating out. Sinking into our pelvis, this bowl that supports the rest of our torso and the abdomen.
I'm feeling the energy in our legs. Our feet. And feeling our legs and feet from inside out. Again, noticing the pulsing, tingling, any sensations that may be there. This life force energy that lives in all of us. And widening your attention so that you can feel the whole body at once as a field of sensation. Noticing the changing dance of sensations playing in this open field of awareness. The smile, the atmosphere of receptivity, allowing everything to be just as it is. In the foreground of our attention, sensations and aliveness. In the background, an alertness and a stillness, a sensing of what's happening. Let yourself be at home. Know this as your home base. An awake openness and expansiveness that includes this whole living dance. And when in the day we get lost in thought and receptivity, reactivity, just a pause to reopen the senses and come back to this feeling of softening, of smiling, of receptivity, this living, vibrant, changing flow. So when you're ready, just gently opening up your eyes again, taking in the world around you. That's the names and faces on the screen. And perhaps bringing this practice into our day, just short moments of bringing this gentle smile to the eyes, 
the mouth, the heart. Whenever we remember, perhaps even when we're out and about, connecting like we did last week in a practice, knowing that we're connected to everyone that we move past today. And be the reason someone smiles, the reason someone feels loved and believes in the goodness in people. Be the reason someone smiles, be the reason someone feels loved and believes in the goodness in people. So we can be a force for good and for love and look what love built. So thank you all. Wish you a blessed day. And I'm going to just write in the chat. You're welcome to unmute and stay in chat or give a, any comments on how that was for you. Um, or also to dash off if you're needing to dash off. Thank you for joining this morning. See you next week. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks, Have a good day. Nick. And you too. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thanks, Meg. <laughs> Thanks, Nicola. It's lovely. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Thank Nicola. You. Sure. Mm. Oh, Thank you. I didn't see Thank you that far. Thanks, Gail. Yeah. Thanks, Heidi. Have a good day. And you too. Lovely to have you here. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for the lovely messages. Thank you, Nikki. Oh, thanks, Ellen. <laughs> Won't you repeat what you said about that warrior energy? Because I think that is mm -hmm. so profound for what is happening around us right now. Um, yeah, Mandy, it's just with, and you know, I don't know too much about astrology and the stars and things. It's not something I've really tapped into as much. Um, but with how things are, apparently there's a, and Ellen, you might know more about this, there's a very strong warrior energy coming through and people um, sort of, yeah, there's this big sense of, let me go back to what I, I said, fighting um, for truth. Um, so, yeah, that, um, so Pam Gregory said at the moment, we're going to be seeing earthquakes of all kinds, physical and political, lots of fiery words and behavior. And it's all about truth and a sort of new truth emerging, searching for truth. So, so you might want to listen to her. I'll send you her link for her, um, her latest one. And you just take what's helpful to you and what's interesting to you and what resonates with you. You know, I, I came obviously from a very Christian background and astrology was something that was not we didn't go there but now so I love using my little app Skyview Light and actually seeing so they talk about oh this the moon is in this and the stars are in this and actually if you use this little app you can see oh gosh the moon is right by there's Gemini or there's Pisces because you can see the star constellations which previously I couldn't make out but it like maps them out if you just hold your phone up to the sky it maps them out and so and I'm realizing how much the sky the stars are changing and I think it's all God and it's all love. And um, yeah, so I'm starting to change my, my view on astrology because it's been so interesting because I often see, gosh, oh, and the last one she said was a lot about um, uh, we're going to see massive floods. And she then afterwards she commented we have the floods we've seen in Western Australia and in South Africa and things. And I mean, it was so, so interesting. Um, so, Nikki, yeah. It is um mainly centered around Aries at the moment because it's the new moon and the sun and the moon were in Aries yesterday and Mars has gone, Mars has gone into Aries or has been in Aries for, for the while now and Mars is the warrior planet the masculine energy and Aries is the first sign of the zodiac cycle and um, Mars actually rules Aries so there's a lot of strong masculine um, mm. energy around right at the moment so mm. that uh, it's, it's more complex than that but that's the sort of one second Perfect. version thank you for explaining that so nicely yeah thank you mm. Mm -hmm. okay bye nikki thank you bye everyone thank you bye thank bye. you very much nikki bye see you next lovely. thank Sarah. you nikki thanks ma'am have a good day bye everyone. yeah may your day be blessed love Thank you. Thanks. Man.